Our conversations continue here at Davos 2024. And joining me now from Dr. Reddy's is G.V. Prasad. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. It's snowing in Davos. Hopefully that's not how cloudy the outlook is for the pharmaceutical sector in 2024. But we've got elections in the big market, the U.S. What, uh, what is the view on the, the year ahead? If you take it overall as an industry, I think the generic industry is in a good shape, good place. We increase affordability, we increase access, not just in the U.S., all over the world. So I'm very optimistic about our sector. But the pricing pressures, do you expect that we've perhaps seen the worst or do you expect that to continue? So I think pricing pressure will always remain in the generic industry. But companies have re responded to it in many ways, moved up the value chain in terms of complex products, products with less competition also improved their technologies, competing more effectively. Also, some companies have exited some of the products, which is again causing a shortage. So overall, while pricing pressure will always be there, I think there is some adjustment happening, and I think the industry has responded well to that. You know, speaking of adjustments, uh, and the big story that's playing out here, of course, is the geopolitical risk, which every yeah. CEO is sort of factoring in, in yeah. some form or fashion, as far as their business plans are concerned. From a pharmaceutical industry's perspective, uh, yeah. what do these, uh, you know, tensions, geopolitical tensions, Russia, Ukraine, impacting your business now, the Middle East, uh, how does that uh, change things for you? So Russia is a big market for us. We didn't have any great disruption there. And the currency also has held up. So while we expected turbulence, it didn't happen. Ukraine is impacted because of uh, the war. Uh, we still ship product there, but it's, it has been impacted. Hmm. The Middle East is not a big issue, issue because it's just very localized yeah. so far, I hope. Um, and Israel is not a big market for uh, pharmaceuticals. It's a small population. Hmm. So overall, while it's distressing to see what, what's happening out there, uh, I don't think uh, it has a serious impact on the pharmaceutical industry. Okay. Uh, what will be the big trends that could shape the pharma industry in 2024? Everyone's talking about generative AI and the fact that it could be a potential game changer as far as the healthcare industry is concerned, bring down the drug development and drug discovery time significantly. How are you reading that? So it's early days, but I'm spending a lot of time, including here, to understand uh, where this is going. Uh, AI is certainly a force multiplier. It is, I would call it, it amplifies human capability. So we are seeing some benefits already in our own organization in terms of use cases, not in drug discovery or innovation yet, but in process development, in uh, R&D productivity, in manufacturing productivity. There is some impact, but yeah. I think the best is yet to come. The potential looks great. But, you know, companies like us have to learn this little you know, at a deeper level. Uh, so how are you going about that? Are you so, going to be investing, uh, you know, bringing on consultants? I mean, what, what, what is this story playing out like in terms of being able to enhance so, capabilities yeah. on that front? So I think uh, from a digitalization front, we are in a very good place. We have invested in digitalization over more than a decade and connected all our uh, value chain activities digitally, now we have all that data. We're now investing in creating uh, machine learning algorithms, uh, AI-driven uh, models, and of course looking at generative AI, but that is at a very early stage. Mm. Generative AI, I don't think we have done much, but in the other areas, we are already seeing benefit. You know, last year we were the lighthouse, we were mm. recognized as a lighthouse. Large part of it was due to the use of digital tools as well as uh, AI-driven uh, methods. But I think it's a little bit of hype also is there. So we will see benefits, but not today yet. Uh, you know, one of the problems that the Indian pharma sector is going to have to grapple with, uh, and it is an impact on account of what we've seen has been a series of uh, contamination challenges yeah. that have occurred in different parts of the world. Uh, you know, as the industry, how are you reacting and responding to this? And what's the impact and the implication in the short term uh, so, of this? Yeah, it has a reputational challenge for the Indian industry. And uh, uh, fortunately, none of the bigger companies have been involved in any of these incidents. The regulator, uh, DCGI, has taken some very uh, tough actions in uh, uh, reforming this uh, way of manufacturing, small-scale manufacturing, not testing inputs, things like we discovered. 
and I hope that will uh, turn the industry around. But I'm optimistic. Industry India is still a major force in the pharmaceuticals in all corners of the world. Mm. Speaking of regulators, uh, the FDA is back in action post the pandemic, uh, quite literally on the ground in India. Uh, yeah. You know, w what's been the feedback on that? So, I mean, I think the FDA is rightfully concerned about the safety of medicines for their citizens, and they have they have ramped up inspections surprise inspections of course they are also under a lot of pressure from their senators uh, to protect uh, the american citizens and we will see some impact of that on the industry as a whole one of the big game changes of 2023 is uh, turned out to be the big weight loss drugs ozempic has uh, has sort of been the the, yeah. the story of of 2023 were you surprised by how it took off i'm not uh, surprised but i'm actually uh, very very impressed by the efficacy of the product you know we've had obesity as a challenge for decades now we've been uh, you know overeating putting on weight and all of that but no drug without serious side effects was available a few years ago gsk launched a product called ali ALLI. Mm. Uh, it had its some uh, distressing side effects which didn't make the drug good but now i'm seeing a real hope for obesity uh, patients as a real um, replacement for bariatric surgery. So, I mean, this has worked wonders for the companies that have launched these products. The market caps have shot up. They're expecting um, obesity to be, an obesity drug to be a $20 billion market for them. So and you're, it's, you're it's among amazing. you're among the companies uh, lining up uh, uh, from, from the Indian generic side to cash in on this opportunity as well. We will, like all generic companies, we will look at all the big selling products and try to develop equivalent versions of them, but the patent life is there for a few more years. So we'll have to wait for the patents. So 2024, the priorities, uh, and more importantly, from a product perspective as well, uh, mm -hmm. what gives you the most confidence? So I think the generic industry is well known. We have been a, a significant player of active ingredients, generics, and biosimilars. That's our core. And I think our core will continue to deliver growth in the near term. But in the long term, we are looking at, uh, you know, bringing in innovative products from all over the world to India as well as select emerging markets. We will also build our innovation portfolio internally, which will probably be the second phase of that. So short term, medium term will be our core business, continue to grow, continue to innovate, continue to develop products that matter. Medium to longer term, innovation is on the agenda. We'll see where it goes. And. Uh potential of trying to do the innovation via acquisitions uh, would that be something that you would consider actively at this point collaboration i think is a uh, essential for us so we are already bringing in a lot of products from various parts of the world into india that is one part we will also do deals where we can leverage each other's strengths acquisition i think i cannot i cannot comment on that but mm. collaboration will be a big on the agenda for uh, bringing innovative products any specific categories uh, that uh, that you are actively considering so from a collaboration a big, point? Oncology is our big focus area. Okay. We also have a subsidiary which does a lot of small molecule immune oncology research. And we'll build on that. We are also getting into large molecules as well as cell and gene therapies. Of course, they'll all be small initially, mm. but we are building the capabilities now. By when do you believe that you know you could reach a sort of inflection point as far as building the in-house capabilities are concerned and this second phase that takes you to the innovation side that you spoke of? So innovation is a very uncertain game. So I, I, I would not be able to give you a time frame. We have the capabilities, but it's not just capabilities. It is about building a portfolio, doing the clinical development and succeeding in that. Five to 10 years is what I'd give myself five to ten years. Yeah. You know, 2023 turned out to be a year where we were expecting the biggest pharmaceutical deal in India to take place and it didn't It didn't go through for yeah. whatever reasons. Yeah. Uh, you know, but do you, do you anticipate that uh, it's only a matter of time where we could see a, a, a big deal like that go through? I, you know, I cannot, uh, uh, you know, predict the future, but I think the company that you refer to is not on sale anymore. That seems to be the case, but consolidation, is, is that likely to play out? I think, you know, we will see consolidation, but not. I'm not sure big companies will merge mm. with each other. But uh, companies backed by private equity players, they, will have a, they have a horizon to exit. And that's the time when, you know, M&A can happen.
it will happen. The advent of private equity in the healthcare services side as well, you know, yes. how are you reading that development and what it could potentially mean? Frankly, I'm very little surprised by the valuations myself, for the active ingredients and services model. Uh, but maybe there is growth out there, which is to be tapped. Well, clearly that's what they're betting on. Yeah? Yes. Well, Jeev Prasad, always a pleasure. You spoke about oncology. Before I let you go, uh, you know, we've launched a big awareness program on uh, on the network. It's called Sanjeevni. Yes. It basically addresses the issue of creating awareness about cancer yeah. uh, and especially screening, uh, early screening of cancer. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us and we will give you the Sanjeevni yeah. pin uh, so that, uh, you know, you could you could wear it and, and share the word as well. Yeah. Thank you. And this is a wonderful initiative, I must say. You know, cancer is curable if detected early. Once uh, symptoms show up, it's too late and uh, treatment options reduce dramatically. So screening is a wonderful thing that you're doing and I want to thank you and congratulate you for it. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, you uh, joining us here today. Thanks very much for your time. With that, we are going to take a break. There's a lot more coming up here on CNBC TV 18. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a moment with more.